Good day. This is Brer Kayla, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. For I continue to work on a proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Sometimes when I talk about the witchcraft that is rampant in the churches, I don't do it with pleasure. It hurts me. It hurts me very, very much to have to deal with situations like this. Right now we're seeing a precedent with a tantrum that is unbelievable. But that is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is the confusion of the body of Christ. And when I talk about the body of Christ, those are the believers. Believers that claim that they follow Yeshua HaMashiach, or most people know him as Jesus. And you wonder, why am I constantly referring to Yeshua and not to Jesus? It is the same what I found and discovered in my own life. When I was before the courts in Canada for almost 18 years, from 1997 to 2015, but the factual judgment came in 2011, in February. So from 97 to 2011, we spent millions of dollars in defending ourselves because I had the audacity to say no to the head of the Freemasons. They wanted a parcel that I had in collateral that was worth billions of dollars. And in order to liquidize this, you had to go and do a follow a certain procedure. That was the way it was done. And this happened on Wall Street. But when you are opposing someone that disagree with you, you normally go to a judge and then you say, well, this, this and this. In this case, it had nothing to do with me accepting him. I turned him down as a partner and that he could not really handle well. The same as what we see right now with President Trump. He got a tantrum and he told me I would see the power that he had as the head of the Freemasons. I should have known what that meant, but during the courses and the studies I did, I'd heard a little bit about it. I never really sat down and studied it. So from a reality point of view, it was a big shock to find out that he represented pure evil. And not only that he represented it, the people that were particularly in his organizations were lawyers, were judges, were police officers, and people from the RCMP. Unfortunately for me, as the court case developed, I discovered what it really meant to be part of that group. So, I also learned that you always have to go back to basics. And why did I learn that? In the beginning, we had many lawyers, and then one after another, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, and they kept on billing. And I ran out of money. After spending $10 million, we had nothing left. And so I now had to defend ourselves because that was an option. So I grabbed the law books and studied. My wife did that as well, and we defended ourselves for several years. The worst part was that we had won a case, and this really offset the Attorney General because it was thrown out out of a court in London. It was thrown out somewhere else, and then they brought it in on the new charges, so-called, that it was now in Hamilton, Ontario. And this is stuff that you normally cannot do. You cannot just keep on shopping. But when you are in that organization, and that is the theme that we have today, you will find out that there is more going on. And as I had studied the law and the courses that I'd taken and university courses that I'd taken in Holland as well as in Canada and the education I picked up about the law was integrity, honesty, you tell the truth. That is one side of the story. The other side of the story is there is a organization that does not work that way, that couldn't care less. They use the name of Yeshua. They call him Jesus. They use whatever they need in order to progress their business. And that is what we are seeing today, folks. As much as I disgust it, I, I'm disgusted with the subject of evil in the church. We have to go back to the foundation. 
what is our foundation? Now, for those that don't know it, I was an evangelist for 12 years in a, a maximum security in Scheveningen, in a, a prison that where uh, Mr. Milosevic also sat, and maybe this rings a bell. But when I ended up in maximum security being sentenced for six years, and I was awaiting my sentencing after so 97, uh, 15 years in court, which is unusual, it's actually illegal, but let's forget that for a moment, I was locked up and I shared a cell with the enforcer for the Hells Angels and he also had some business to do with the Benditos. Both groups were well known and feared. The people inside were afraid and each time when he had to go to a judge he had five guards with him because he was pretty strong and his hands were definitely weapons. But the beauty of it is as we were together when we were alone, we talked. And this is where I saw that we all wore a orange coverall. We were the same. And when you are all the same, it is not that you did this and you did this. He was instrumental to killing a few people. He got five years. I was instrumental in saying no to the Illuminati or the Freemasons. And I got six years times three. How dare you? But is that really the truth? The truth is that we are in a world that is not what it appears to be. We need to understand that when we pray to our Father, it is not really our Father. We are praying the disciples' prayer. Those that are following the kingdom of God, those that are following the way, the truth, and the life, those are the ones. And I share this in love because sometimes it sounds so harsh when you say, oh, there's terrible witchcraft and this and this. It is true that there are a lot of mistakes, a lot of terrible things happening in the And people keep on pounding on it, particularly the leadership. Thus says the Lord and Trump is going to stay in power. A man that lies, cheats, and does everything under the moon that God does not like. And yet the body of Christ is defending him because they got the Jerusalem. Oh my gosh. But is that really true? See, when we look at the Jewish people as the first people that got the law of God, we fail to recognize that the Jewish people goofed up. Why do I say that? Because when Yeshua came on this earth around 30 AD, when they started calculating, he said, you are, and he's talking to the Pharisees, there was about 3,000 Pharisees around that time, you are from the synagogue of Satan. Now, why did he say that? For many years, I've been wondering, now I'm 70, so it took me seven decades before I got certain things in order. But when Jesus said that, he didn't say it because he didn't like those people. He said it because they were mistaken. They were accepting something that was not right. And Adam and Eve had done the same. They sided with Satan. And the moment they sided with Satan, they could no longer stay in the presence of God. So God had to cut them off in order to protect his children. See, God loves his children so much that he had already a restorative justice set up. That department took only 2,000 years to fill because Yeshua was the first one that did exactly what God asked. He fulfilled the law. And you know how he did that? He fulfilled the Ten Commandments, the other commandments, because in technicality, the Jewish people will tell you that there are over 300 laws. And all those laws were done and fulfilled by Yeshua HaMashiach. Now, if somebody else would have done it, he would have been the same because Jesus said, I am here for the sake. A healer doesn't come for people that are whole. So in other words, when we are sick, it's because we are not whole. And if I'm not whole, I need to be completed. But which completion are we talking about? 
I got a body, I got eyes, I got hair, I got fingers and toes and everything. So my body, by the grace of God, is complete. So what is the sickness that I have? And this is the part that a lot of people miss. When Adam and Eve in paradise were separated from God, they were no longer in the presence of eternity. We were created PMS. And I hope that I don't create nightmares for some of the women that are suffering of it. But PMS here means politics, uh oh, no, nope. physical, mental, and spiritual. Now, Adam and Eve were created, both men and wife. So, God's image of a complete human being is husband and wife. And it might imply a lot to many people that live different, that live with boys and boys or girls and girls. But you got to make up your own mind about that. I'm not saying anything other than the way God re created us, it was a male and a female. So when we got all of a sudden sick, that was when we got separated from God's presence. And so when Jesua, after 2000 years, came on this earth and he was the first one that fulfilled the law, he did something that was more important. The prodigal son, the first one, were the Jewish people. Did they kill Jesus? They had nothing to do with it. They were the prodigal sons. The second group of prodigal sons were those that were non-Jews, Choyim. In other words, those that are not Jewish people. They were supposed to be welcomed by the Jewish brothers, but there was an opposition there. And that is where Jesus said, you, not doing the will of God, are from the synagogue of Satan. So if we are not doing the will of God, although we might call ourselves Christians, and I'm not going to state Roman Catholic or Protestant or whatever, but Christians in general, we now have a problem. We belong to the synagogue of Satan if we don't do the will of God. The same as Adam and Eve in the garden, they were separated from God when they sided with Satan. So what is it that connects us with Satan in the church? In particular for those that are leaders. I am talking about the people with the big mega churches. It's not that that you're not supposed to have a big mega church. It is just the baloney that you're filled with when you start speaking thus says the Lord. Well God is not speaking to you. You speak in tongues, wonderful. You don't speak in tongues, no big deal. Because it doesn't matter. See, we got to have our priorities straight. And like I talked about the plumb line, there is a guideline set. God gave us those Ten Commandments so that we knew at least the bare, bare, bare minimum in the kingdom of God. And if I pray the Our Father and don't do anything that goes together with the Our Father, in other words, I forgive, I love, and I kill and screw everyone that I can find around me, then I have a complication here. Because one doesn't go together with the other. So I am from the kingdom of Satan. I am from the synagogue of Satan. So if I call myself a Christian and I'm fighting and killing other people because my faith says this and this and this, I belong to the synagogue of Satan. Yeah, but I'm a true Jew. Yeshua says a true Jew is someone that does what God requires. Oh, oh. And what is it that God requires? There is one God. We got to love the God with all our heart. And yet my love here on this earth is I got to make more money. I got to have a bigger house. I got to have a bigger plane. That has nothing to do with the love of God. Now, if the love of God urges me to do something so that I need a plane in order to do whatever I need to do, which is godly inspired, a different story. But if I got to show up now and I'm on the list of the richest pastors, I got a little problem because those that are rich 
and I was one of them folks, I had to learn to be satisfied when I had nothing and when we had on paper billions of dollars. And when I learned that when it was taken away one piece at another to be satisfied, I love the Lord and God comes for us, for prodigal sons and daughters, not for Christians, because a Christian has a problem. They have to go back to the basics and find out why am I praying to different gods? Why am I celebrating the parties from Satan in my church under the name of a fellow that was not named that way by God? Because Yeshua HaMashiach was his name. Yet the Roman Empire in 325 AD, he changed that. As a matter of fact, he couldn't care less. He said, this and this and this, and if you don't do that, I will kill you when you go in the arena. Uh, excuse me, is that how I have to become a Christian? I was raised a Christian, folks, but the more I started understanding where I came from and that my rules were based on, <coughs> yeah, I don't want to say it, but on assumptions and reality is different, then I have a problem. Oh, folks, I feel so sorry for you, but I have to deal with this. Because God is an awesome God. And there is no darkness in God's kingdom. See, when he is looking at the virgins, the example that he gave, Tessua, he talked about those that had the lights. And we all looking at, oh yeah, I do this and I do that and that's the light. The light is the light of God. Nothing else. The light of God. And if the light of God is not shining through me, in other words, when God looks at us and he doesn't recognize us because there is no love, then I have a problem. Do you want to be part of the synagogue of Satan? Whether you are Jewish, whether you're Christian, when you are any other name under the world, and that means Buddhist, that means Muslim, that means do you love God? And if you love God, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all those other things shall be added unto you. And remember, folks, tough times never last. But tough people, they do. Because God shows them the way. God bless you. Bye for now. This is Br'er Caleb, Ph.D. My pen name is of a citizen of the other kingdom, and the Ph.D. stands for Post Hole Digger. We will continue to dig for a proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Three blind mice and the plight of my struggles. If you could see me, I wish I could share with you my most profound feeling for you might think I don't understand, you think nobody knows the trouble you've seen. The test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in mind and still retain the ability to function. The next best thing is to take you along my journey and share with you my discoveries. As I wish I could put my arm around you and pull you in His divine presence, the Shekinah glory of Adonai God, I cannot. The insightful ability of an educated, anointed mind can grasp all non-essential dynamics that one must bring together to form and embody the higher vision of reality. The secrets of how to survive temptation. It would be best if someone cares for you, and occasionally that can make all the difference in the world. Everyone needs a man of God for encouragement. Honestly, a stranger is anyone who is not your friend. Secrets of how to survive temptation. A deception protocol channel is a place where we will be dealing with some sensitive issues which others often avoid. The word stupid does not exist here, for there are merely untutored individuals. I am a professional PhD from Canada. And my class was minimal, as far as I recall, I was the only one in my class that qualified for the Desert University. This course took me about 40 years, of which 12 years in a legal battle in the High Court as they like to call inside maximum security. New and improved spiritual warfare on boogers. You know I even took a course, new and improved spiritual warfare on boogers, I got a diploma to prove it. 
It occurs when the object clogs the nostril, making it difficult for air to move through the nasal passage. Your child may make whistling noises when breathing through their nose. A stuck object would cause this noise. Brer Caleb, PhD. Tough times never last, tough people do.